Charleston celebrates its 350th anniversary this year, and to commemorate that, Charleston Pirate Tours brings you Charleston History Highlights. Hi, Eric with Charleston Pirate Tours. I'm down here on um, South Battery, and I wanted to tell you a little story about the house behind me over here, but more importantly about the carriage house behind it. It's the Battery Carriage House Inn. Now this property, of course, was a private residence for a number of years, going back to 1843. It's gone through several owners and several different renovations. And probably the most interesting person I think that actually lived here for a period of time was the Simmons family. And it was Andrew Simmons, who was an Andrew Simmons Jr. actually, who was given the land just down the street to build a beautiful home for his beautiful wife, Miss Daisy Bro. Today we call that um, Villa Margarita. But anyway, the carriage house back here is now a nice little bed and breakfast called the Battery Carriage House Inn. Now, I don't know a whole lot of hotels and bed and breakfast inns that are scattered around our beautiful city that happily will tell you on their website that they have haunted rooms. Yeah, they even talk about experiences that people have in some of these haunted rooms. Now, there's two specific rooms that are said to be haunted, room eight and room 10. Now the ghost in room eight is one that's referred to as the headless torso. Now a little back history on this. It is known that during the Civil War, all around us down here along the battery were cannons. And when they knew that the Union Army was closing in on Charleston, they started to detonate a lot of that ammunition and powder so that it wouldn't fall into the enemy hands. Now at that time, carriage houses up and down through here were also used as, um, hit, a, as a place for the soldiers to sleep at night. They would go there to relax and, and, and basically for their downtime. So one day it is documented there was a munitions detonation down here that got a little out of hand and some men were killed. Perhaps this is the ghost of one of those soldiers. Now, one of my favorite experiences somebody had that comes straight off of their website was a guy named Paul. Now, Paul shared this with the manager. He said in the middle of the night, he and his wife were sound asleep in room number eight. When, as he put it, in the middle of the night, he had a sensation that he was being watched. And though he wasn't sure he was actually awake, was he in sort of a, a dream trance-like state? He wasn't really sure, but suddenly, right up there at the side of his bed, as he put it, he could see the torso of a man with no face, no arms, and no legs. And it moved closer to him. And as it closed in on him, he recalled seeing it was lay, wearing these layered, woolen-looking clothes ragged and ripped to shreds. So what did he do? Well, I guess what any curious person would do, he reached out to try to touch it, which he realized that he couldn't touch it, but he did realize that his arm went through it. And he said this entity, if you will, let out this guttural moan, as he put it, like nothing he'd ever heard. Well, I think they had a story to take home from their vacation. But one of my other favorites came out of room number 10. Now this is one they call the gentleman ghost. Now there are stories that have swirled around about who this guy might be. Well, some people believe he was a young man who had gone off to college, left his love behind. And while he was away at school, his, his beautiful girlfriend well, she sort of fell out of love with him, found her another man, and even got married. And so when he comes home from school, he finds out that the love of his life is gone. And in his deep sorrow of losing this beautiful woman from his life, he dressed in a fine outfit, climbed to the very top of the house, and threw himself off. Maybe that's the ghost. Well, either way, no matter who he is, He's quite a gentleman. Now this story was shared by a couple of ladies who were here for a vacation several years ago. This is great. 
they were celebrating the birthday of their of, of, of their um, of their birth. They were twins, so they're celebrating their birthday. This is where they wanted to stay. So they talk about in the middle of the night. It was around 11 o'clock. They had put a chair in front of the door just in case they didn't want anybody walking in on them and they go to bed well later on that evening one of the other sisters well she had a tendency to snore a little bit and the other one really couldn't get to sleep and she said suddenly she looked up and standing right beside her bed was a young man dressed up in a nice looking suit had his hat tipped his hat put it under his arm pulled back the covers and slid into the covers right beside the sister who was awake. She's elbowing the sister who's snoring, trying to wake her up, but she wasn't even roused up. Well, finally she wakes her up and tells her what's going on, and they're both looking, and now he's gone. Folks, that's just a couple of examples of the things that people have shared with the management here at the Battery Carriage House Inn. So if you want to stay in a genuinely haunted place and they're happy to share their stories with you when you check in, find your way down here to South Battery in Charleston next time you're here and stay at the Battery Carriage House Inn. Happy birthday, Charleston.